Is the mic in weird? I mean, I've got it right here as well. I think you're fine. Don't okay. worry about it. All right. It All means right. you're a professional. I wouldn't I wouldn't be too <laughs> too worried about it. All right, sounds good. I could also put it low if you want. No, no, you're good. All right, sweet. sweet. This is not this is not a professional thing. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we should just get started then. Yeah, man, let's do it. It's the podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson. This week's guest, he's been a clone, a covenhead, and a clan leader, but really he just wants butter in his coffee like the rest of us. Keston John. So Keston, hello. Welcome to the show. Very well. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for, for taking time out of your, your day to, to come and sit and have a have a drink with me. Yes. What are you what are you drinking this morning? Uh, this is Silencio. Silencio. My favorites. Silencio is a tea? <laughs> mm-hmm. And is that is that an LA specific tea? It is. It is. It's um it's from a company called August Uncommon. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah. It's like a spicy pineapple notes. It's good. It's mm-hmm. good. How long have you been drinking that? Um maybe since twenty fourteen or so. Oh, so time. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when you found it? That like, do you like? Was it? Is it a core memory for you to just be like? And then yes. I was, and then my life was changed. Yes. yes. Someone, someone uh, sent me a free tea. It's like that. That that was their marketing thing. It's like, oh, you just you know send send a free tea in. So, so. yeah. Is that was that was that like a uh, the 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 benefits of being being a being a, a, a quote big deal as people just send you random samples of tea. no no that was that was august's thing and so yeah yeah got this tea and i was like oh my god <laughs> yeah and it's been it's been your life has been changed ever since ever since ever since i don't have that because i'm in toronto and they don't they don't ship it here in or at least in in enough time for us to do this so i'm drinking uh heavenly cream from sloan tea oh i'm jealous I can send I can send you a packet if you want after the show. It's very lovely. I do think Earl Grey is gonna it's gonna I'm I'm gonna have trouble at the end of this. <laughs> with the amount of with the amount of Earl Grey I'm drinking now, it's gonna be because I'm a weakling when it comes to all of this stuff with caffeine and everything. I'm just like I've already had a coffee today. I cheated and I had a coffee, yeah, so I was like, yeah. Earl Grey is not gonna get me going. It's not I, gonna get you going. Nah, I I mean I'm the worst Englishman now. <laughs> I, I've, I've been in Canada too long that now I have to have, I have to have a coffee before I even, and like, and like you said, Earl Grey, you said tea and I was like, oh God. <laughs> See, I just, I didn't grow up drinking coffee. So no? it, it, yeah, no, not at all. I don't, my wife says I wake up with like a fire under my ass or something because I just, I don't, I don't need anything really. Oh really? Like I'm drinking this just because but it's not it it doesn't need i don't need it to wake up yeah so do, do you so like uh, when did you when did you decide to start drinking coffee and what have you then if you didn't grow up with it um my wife drinks a ton of coffee or she oh, did. So she's a bad influence then. she did yeah <laughs> oh 100 100 uh she 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 was into the coffee and i was like oh yeah let me try this thing and crossfitters will be like oh bulletproof coffee so i i tried it with the butter and the the thing, the MCT oil, and did the whole thing, and I was I was actually sustained on just a cup of coffee, and I do a whole CrossFit class and be fine. But to be honest, um, it's just it's I felt myself after a while being like, like jitters, just yeah, like I don't need it, and 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 yeah, it just I let I let it go. Yeah. So I have an occasional coffee. Yeah. When I used to work at this, that I'd get people coming in. Asking if we blended co- uh, blended butter into the coffee. I'm like, for God's sake, just drink. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got Google reviews, <laughs> but it was it was just the most ridiculous thing for me. For people, it was like seven in the morning. They're like, hey, can can you blend some butter into this coffee for me? I was like, for God's sake, just take the drip and go. For God, like, here, just eat the butter separately. If you, like, come on, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. There's a level of like wankery to it where it's just like oh i have to have my special drink the, the bulletproof bulletproof with mct oil specifically what is mct oil it's like um the coconut oil but they do something to it i, I can't remember exactly it's, oh, it's 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 just coconut oil yeah it's basically coke i think it's 
I don't know. I I, I would say I actually don't know, to be honest. I, I, know, it's coconut, I know it's coconut oil. <laughs> Let's look it up. It. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> I have some in the cupboard, to be honest, <laughs> from my from my bulletproof coffee days. Oh wow! Uh, oh, so it lasts then? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! So this this is a ketone thing. This is when we were doing keto for a bit. Oh. So yeah, but it is basically um, it is basically coconut oil, but it's like liquidy. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like melted, melt even more <laughs> melted coconut oil or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do? Have you done a lot of different uh, uh, like fitness trends? Those kind of things, like keto and and uh, no paleo. I, I, that's what honest, I was thinking. Paleo. Um, no. To be honest, like I've, I've I don't know. Like in, I'm getting older, so I, I feel like I I've before this I was just able to eat whatever I wanted. You know, especially if you're doing something like CrossFit where you're like burning a ton of calories. Um. I just haven't really needed to um, do that stuff. Um, if I'm doing something like that, it's because I want to um, eat in solidarity with my wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Make it easier for her. Know, so, yeah. So, she, yeah. So she's making the dinners, to be honest. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll eat like that yeah, for sure. a little bit. Yes, dear. But, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Because you're posting a lot on your, I mean, not that I stalked you in, intensely, which I definitely did, but you, 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 you're posting a lot of fitness stuff on your, on your Instagram at the moment. Is that like a, yeah. is that like a big focus for you in general? Has that become a, a bigger focus recently? Um, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's been a focus. It's, it's sort of, I, I kind of feel like we use our whole body. Do you know what I mean? And so. Like people or you mean actors? actors i think even in even in the voice stuff i i'm i'm in here like moving and you know imagining my world so that like when i do turn towards the pickup yeah. you know i'm it's it's picking me up in a way that uh you know is organic and real and and makes it feel real yeah and so you need to just hone your instrument yeah yeah and so i i feel like if i know my body i can you know like kind of create characters and and have fun in that way. Yeah. So. Do you think you find do you think you find different avenues for for directions you can take? Like do you you add more tools to your acting toolbox when you're working through different exercises and things like that? Do you think it like allows you to like oh I can I can grunt at that volume. That's cool. <laughs> you, you know those kind of things. Yeah, I mean specific things. Yeah, I mean there's definitely like there is a carryover between the difficulty of a workout and like playing some sort of like orc or something like people are always like, your efforts are so real. I'm like, yeah, because I was just lifting that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I that. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's called 400 pounds. Let's go. <laughs> the the only efforts I can't really replicate in here and and it and it kills me and and everyone knows is like running. Running is like they they want to they want to hear this, but it's like no one makes sounds like that when they're running. Like in yeah. fact, I don't even know if I make any sounds when I'm running. So they just run a little faster. <laughs> Nobody does that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. I remember that. That reminds me of the um Did you ever see that clip of Hugh Jackman doing ADR for his for uh Old Man Logan film yeah. whatever it is yeah. and he's just like ah, ah, ah. And <laughs> <laughs> The things we do. Yeah. The yeah. things we do. That's wild. <laughs> I forget. Did you do did you have voice training specifically before your first video game? I took a class when I first moved to Los Angeles and uh that's that's the only sort of quote unquote VO training that I've done. But to me, like I approach this like a, the, the the same as being in a theater or being a, you know being in front of a camera. It's just a different pickup pattern. So I'm gonna. This is my close up versus you know the wide shot would be, be more theater or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's how I, I kind of look at it. But yeah, no, other than a lot of the stuff I do, to be honest, is like they want it to sound more real. You know what I mean? Um, that, that does seem to be the way that the animation has gone in the past 15 mm-hmm. years. 
yeah. it does seem to be like, and I don't know if that's because of shows like Adventure Time yeah. or like regular shows seem to have like set the pace for like what animation wants to do now, because it seems like before then it was very over the top, very kind of yeah. stylized voice acting. And now it just seems to be slightly heightened, but right. still a lot more grounded and a lot more um uh human realistic or I, I don't know i don't know what kind of word you'd use to describe that than yeah, yeah. um than before and I, it feels like the the previous voice acting of the 90s and whatever is now for the younger demographic cartoons right. i don't know if you if you if you agree <laughs> i'm talking i could be talking out my ass here Kesten. you got to help me <laughs> you're the one with the with the with the more experience i'm just the one watching it <laughs> no i mean i i think you're right it's any of the stuff from DreamWorks or, you know, like uh, I'm doing some stuff for, or I've done some stuff for Lucas Animation, like it's all they want, grounded performances. Mm. Um, even the kids shows, you know, like, or kids shows. Shira, we'd always finish a scene where I was like, you know, just getting into it. And then we'd, we'd all freeze and be like, for kids, you know, it's <laughs> because it wasn't the acting is not for kids. In fact, when whenever I'm in a session and they say, oh, can you do it? You know, take a little bit. I was recently in a session. They're like, take, take the growl out. You know, it's for kids. I'm like, no, it's no, it's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> kids are watching all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, God, the, the the weird stuff that came out when we were kids. Are you kidding me? Like oh, the 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 what's that? What's that? The 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 the, the claymation thing they did with the with the 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 wrestling uh, thing yeah or the, the yeah god celebrity death match are you kidding yes. me or red and stimpy or any none of that stuff was yeah yeah are you kidding me <laughs> mm. and it's it's like um it, 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 it i don't know i think that i think that's a bit of a cop out i don't know if do you agree but like for me there's people saying like Oh yeah. Well, it's for kids, so you know you don't have to. It doesn't have to be like grounded as much, or it doesn't have to be like I just, doesn't have to make as much sense. It's like oh, I don't think that's true. I don't subscribe to that. Some of the best television ever made has been in animation. Like Avatar, are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, like yeah. Last Airbender is, is is still up on IMDb in the top ten of <laughs> of all time greatest shows. I think yeah. it beat The Sopranos on IMDb. Yeah. And I mean, I watch a lot of, I watch a lot of preschool animation and there is some of that silliness in the voices and, and, and that's fun. My, my daughter watches it, but, but I think she would just equally watch like something that's more grounded and, and chill. So I think I, I like that animation is moving this way. Do you, now that you, as you, as you are now being subjected to these preschool cartoons against your will you have no say in the matter do no. you do you are you going at it from just a parent view or do you does your does oh, your no. uh, voice actor head turn on and you're like oh for god's sake they could have done a better take of that no, no i i i'm never like <laughs> they could have done a better take but i'm more like what is this cheesy voice like like why why are we doing this cartoon voice for kids that's it's more like that yeah what is the sh what I mean when I'm not I'm not asking you to call them out specifically. What are the shows that you're that you are on in your household right now? Um, to be honest, I think da Daniel Tiger does a pretty good job, a really good job, honestly, of having like naturalistic voices. Um, it's based on their whole Fred Rogers, you know, um, and uh, catalog. But there's like another. There's f a few other shows on PBS Kids that um, yeah. While they're teaching her a lot about dinosaurs, more about dinosaurs than I've ever known in my entire life. Some of the characters' voices are just like, you know, for kids. And and that's that's fine. That's fine. Like, she enjoys it. She loves it. Like, I'm not the audience. So. Have <laughs> you seen any Bluey? I have seen Bluey. Yeah. What do you think of Bluey? Because that's a different take. That's a different take on the way that they do. Uh, it, it seems yeah. very... Um, kind of goes back to what I was saying about like that a far more naturalistic. Yeah. I love it. Like, and that's why I think people are like gravitating towards it because when you watch with your kids, if you can relate to the, if you can relate to someone in there, you're going to watch more. 
And so there's there's moms for Bluey. There's dads for Bluey. There's all kinds of Bluey groups. Oh, God, don't. <laughs> don't. I've, I, like, there have been days I've had, I've had episodes of Bluey on. I'm just like, this is... This is hitting me in places I didn't think it would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it, and that kind of, if I can be a really professional host for a second, <laughs> that I, I think that, that takes us very nicely into, into, uh, into the representation of the shows that you've gone on. Cause it does feel like the, the voice shows that you've worked on have been definitely trying to pave the way for, for far more representation. Yeah, uh, not only for kids, but just for people in general. Um, and do you think is that? I mean, obviously, as an actor, we just say yes to a lot of the stuff that comes in. But do you do you try to make conscious choices to 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 gravitate more towards things that that bring that representation? I mean, definitely. I mean, I I, I don't audition for everything. I mean, I I'm sort of in a place where like the agency that I'm with, they send a lot of stuff, and that's it's such a beautiful thing. To be like, I don't audition for it all because it doesn't all make sense for me. Do you know what I mean? Um, and the things that come in and the things that I book, just I just think you know they align, and and so you know I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll do them or not, just yeah. depending on if they don't align or if it's something I want to do. So yeah, um, Shira was sort of the a blessing. It was like my uh, maybe my second job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second voiceover animation, anything. And the agency I was with before, they never sent me anything animation. They're like, do you think you maybe want to try this animation thing? Because I was mm -hmm. doing strictly commercials. Like I was booking all their commercials, any commercial they'd send me, I was, I was working on or video games and, and they weren't sending me any animation. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know? And now it's, that's mostly what I do. Was, so. yeah, was that, was that including the video games as well? Did that come after the commercials as well? Um, no, I like, so that, that other agency I was with, they were really only sending me commercials and video games. Um, and mm -hmm. it wasn't like video games with nuance. It was like, and I was just starting out. So I was like willing to go into a session for four hours and scream my head off, get down you know <laughs> yeah absolutely at that point so. you're just like yes please i will i will yeah. i will lose my voice for you yeah yeah and then um so. and and so i mean shira was huge yeah it was wonderful and then you you go from there to owl house which yeah. is the only reason that i actually wanted you on the podcast i gotta be honest with <laughs> Because I am obsessed with that show. Oh, my Owl House stuff out there. Mate, mate. <laughs> absolutely one of the best shows of all time, that show. Like, that's, like... Um, so, thanks for that. Thanks for Owl House. Yeah, Bloody man. great. I, I was, I mean, blessed to be a part of it. They're, they're so kind. They sent me... They sent me artwork. Like, I was like... <gasps> oh. they don't, like, like, the thing is, like... In this business, people just don't do that. They don't do stuff like Owl House is doing and has done. And um, the reception has been huge, obviously. Like, it's, I think it's clear when you put everyone on screen and, and every type and, and, and you tell real stories, I think people gravitate towards it. It was Disney Channel's number one show. Yeah. Like, yeah. their number one show. And, who knows why it was canceled? Um, we can we can guess all day, but I don't know why you cancel your number one show. But um, yeah, it it just they they just don't just people just don't do stuff and like that. And yeah. it's good people working on the show. You know what I mean? So why? Okay, so so, so you you've been in it. Why do you? Because I think the three that stand out to me recently were were Shira. Uh, uh, Owl House and Infinity Train. I don't know if you watched any Infinity Train, but they are. Oh, it, it it's a wonderful show, but but it but it got cancelled again. HBO cancelled it um, because they said that it wasn't. They couldn't that it couldn't find its audience, but it has very much like Owl House. It has that huge audience, mm. and I wonder. I just wanted to kind of get your take on on where. Where's the breakdown? Where do you think, where do you think, what is it? Is it merch sales? They can't, they can't find an audience for merch? Because I know that that used to be a thing where if you couldn't make a toy out of 
a popular character, then the show wasn't going to get picked up. But then is it just uh, algorithms now, do you think? Sure. Is, it, sure. is, it, is, it the, is it some guy sitting on a hill saying, no, it's not me, the children are wrong? Like, what, what do you think it is? Um, honestly? Mm. Mm. Um, Whatever's going to not lose you any work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I, I can't possibly know why, why people do the things they do. It, 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 you know, um, in the dark it was, is like one of the number one shows, like as far as mm-hmm. like when we premiered on, um, on when, when season four premiered, there's a uh, numbers that came out for viewership mm-hmm. and we were with the, uh, new, like, almost a billion hours of television um number two only to um the new game of thrones spinoff so and that was canceled so yeah i can't possibly know why execs do what they do in the case of owl house it it boggles my mind like why you would cancel sort of your number one show um Mm -hmm. yeah but uh Honestly, I think I think maybe there were execs that had problems with the themes. Um, mm-hmm. As much as you might champion um, inclusion and say, "Hey, like, yes, yeah. if you have, you know, uh, <laughs> groups coming to you and saying, "Hey, like, we have a problem with this," you may just be like, "You know what? This show is too much of a headache." or what yeah. have you. And I, yeah. I can't, I can't say that that's what happened for sure, but why do you cancel your number one show? Like <laughs> it's like, that's the number one show on their network, like Disney channel, not, not Disney. It wasn't on Disney plus. So yeah. I don't know why people do things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it usually comes down to money. Right. <laughs> so. And, and then, and then that takes us to, to now we're recording this on, on the 13th of July. Yes, where they're voting to, to strike. sag after is voting to strike, and uh, because of the negotiations with um, with the AMPTP. Yes, yeah, yeah. And streaming services specifically, it seems to be centered around streaming services more than anything else. Streaming mm-hmm. seems to be the real, um, that streaming and AI seems certainly with the writer strike seems yeah. to be the real, um, demon in the room. Well, for do you, sure. Do, do you? I mean, I, I know that you because you've been you've been pretty pretty um, driven when it comes to union support for mm-hmm. a long time. Do you find that? Do you find that? <laughs> this is an obvious question. Do you think? <laughs> do you think the unions are in the wrong? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 but do you? Um, what What is your What's your take on like the AI and the the way that streaming has gotten? Uh, in terms of the algorithm and stuff like that? I mean, AI is inevitable, right? Like, um, you know, the father of AI came out, come out and said that basically, I mean, we've all seen this movie. <laughs> it's, it's called iRobot. It's called, you know, Terminator. Like, it, it, we've all seen this movie. Um, the father of AI came out and said that, like, it needs to have some parameters and some controls on it in order to, you know, and so that, like it's not cool for a voice actor to go on a website and their voice has been taken and now digitally created so someone doesn't need to hire Keston anymore they can use Keston's voice that's literally your voice like it's just so the parameter there needs to be parameters on it and there needs to be it's inevitable but i don't mind making something i mean it happens all the time i get residuals for things that I did in, you know, when I first started in 2007, that's great. So just pay me, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like make make it in a way that like, sure, you can digitally recreate my voice, but I mean, I need to be paid or compensated in some way for my voice existing in the universe in perpetuity. Um, And so, yeah, I, I think it's definitely at the forefront of our fight with uh, the producers because we don't want a we don't want AI writing our shows like nobody wants that I know it sounds good right now but when the human soul is taken out of performance and and out of writing and out of 
Yeah. I mean, everything that you could possibly do, except for maybe, I mean, making a meal plan. Because um, <laughs> I've seen people, I've seen <laughs> people plans using are good. it for that. The meal plans are good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, put in all your ingredients and then tell it what you want to do and, uh, yeah. and it'll make you a meal plan. Great. That's that's fantastic. Like have AI do those kinds of tasks. But to be honest, when you take the human soul out of art, like good luck. And I think I, I do think that we'll eventually get to a point where we will start fighting back against some of this stuff. There will be whole movies, I'm sure, made with AI, written in AI, acted with AI. I mean, I, I know that's coming, but it's going to take us to be like, I want to see that shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, yeah. And, and say things like that and, and, and to feel like that. But I, I, have, I have a joke with a friend that's like, eventually we're just going to be like, Oh, did you hear about the bar down the street? They have humans working in there, you know. Yes. <laughs> because, yes, because, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I mean, that's already happening with like every customer service job, you know, McDonald's has got the kiosks now, so you don't have to talk to a person. Coffee shops have got robots that that uh, you know, your Starbucks vending machine is basically a, a Starbucks barista now. Yeah. Um and it's and it's going all the way up the chain. What I love is that you have people that are now, you know, like um uh, property lawyers are getting upset that this AI can just write a lease agreement for them without you needing to pay a property lawyer. And now they're getting upset. So at what point, the real question for people in this debate is at what point does, at what level of, of human uh, uh, work does AI stop being okay for the people that are rich? Because ultimately it's the people that are rich that are deciding all of this stuff. I, I don't think, I think as long as there's dollars to be made, I don't think, um, I don't think a lot of people care. I, I, I mean, I, th I think there's a great majority that, that, I mean, look at what came out about <laughs> what, the, what a producer said about writers is like, it, it, it is like, we want to, with this strike, we hope to break them and when they start losing their homes and apartments yeah. it's like it's yeah. it's it's as long as we are in a capitalistic society in which you know the dollar drives everything um i think you're going to see more of that i think you're just going to see more of that and there will be a few outliers that actually like want to leave a mark on humankind but um if i could even though I went to the bank yesterday and they have these kiosks that you could use at the bank, but I had a Canadian check <laughs> that, I <can't, laughs> that, I, that I could not, <laughs> you, I can't use the kiosk. And he's like, oh, use the kiosk to deposit your check. And I was like, it's an international check. And he's like, oh, okay. And he forwarded me yeah. to the two tellers in this bank that has like 10 teller slots, but they've now been covered up. No, there's no, you know, there's, there's no, no need, need for, for them. all these tellers. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So, but yeah. then that then that then carries on to like, well, these businesses don't need the bigger spaces. Right. So then. Right. So then the people, the, the landlords that own these commercial spaces then start losing money and then they get upset. So then they're trying to force back to work for remote work because they're yeah. like, no, 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 no. That that affects me. So you got to go back to the giant office, even though automation and AI and all of these kiosks has removed the need for so much large space. So where do you get off? <laughs> like, what do you do? We turn up for free and just stand there to make sure you get rent? Like what? Yeah, Come yeah, on. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, uh, I, I mean, in Toronto, I met a couple uh, people who work for Facebook and Google and you would think Facebook and Google, right? Like you can work from anywhere. So during the pandemic, they allowed them to work anywhere. And then at, at, at one point, Point, Zuckerberg was basically like, hey, if you want to work in your whatever country you're in, and they all had a meeting and they were like, basically like, if you want to work in whatever country you're currently in, great. You just get paid in that country's like whatever we're normally paying people in that country. And people were like, yo, I can't afford my San Francisco mortgage on this. And so they were moving back. They were moving back. Oh, <laughs> God. so it's just like it makes no sense, right? No. Hey, I'm going to pay you less because of the region that you live in. It makes no sense, but that's I mean, that's that, I don't know. It's like we, we live to fight another day, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like what do you do? Like what? It's I don't. I feel like there's going to be an end game at some point where either either AI is is 
not it it's certainly a good tool like chat gpt is certainly a good tool for helping people get their work done yeah i don't think it replaces the person no um even if it gets good it it, you know you were talking about the landlords yeah yeah when people start like that's not an excuse that's not a replacement for a legal service do you know what i mean i don't care how many how much they, so chat gpt and ai's read the entire internet they've read pretty much so many books that have been online whatever it doesn't really matter it's not a replacement for uh because i have to put in the right information and so when people start getting sued or the right information's not in those leases or what have you i think then people will be like oh crap like Let's get the yeah. human touch back into it. It's going to come down to money, I think, at the end of the day. is like when when it starts affecting money, then... <laughs> that's Yeah, that's my rule that I hold uh, very close to me is that people don't learn until they lose money. Mm-hmm. That's my that's my like one rule when it comes to working with bosses or or friends or anything like that. People won't learn, especially when it comes to like big decisions, unless they lose money. And, and it's certainly like, you know, <laughs> saying that... It would cost. It would have cost the networks, the the, the uh, AMPTP. Is that, that that's that's who the writers are striking against as well, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. The AMPTP has lost more money now from oh, yeah. lack of content than it would to just agree to what the writers were yeah. asking for. They're asking for like they're asking for what is equivalent to one percent. Of what, <laughs> of what is made the this the money that's been made in the last, you know, the, since the previous contract is, you know, it, obviously, like if you invest in any of those stocks, you know, the money that's been made has been great, and the writers and actors um, just want do they just want a little piece of it? They just want to be able to like, you know. They don't want to have to be gig workers. And so if I do a show and it blows up on Netflix, I should get residuals. This is how this business has always been done. And if you turn creatives into, I I personally feel like if you turn creatives into gig workers, they can't afford their life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's happening. I mean, union membership is is growing all over the world right now and and I don't know. What, do you think it is? Do you think it is a a turning point? Do you think it's just a hiccup after COVID? Do you do you think after COVID, just because of lockdown or uh, the Ukraine war? Do you think it's like? Do you think it is a turning point for us as as a quote society, or do you think this is just like a little bump and then it'll go back to normal again? I mean, I I think that that uh, it, it, you know it it happens. I don't know. It's cyclical, right? Like. People realize that, you know, they're not making what the people at the top are making, and which is fair. Like if yeah. you're if you're putting your entire lot like if you're putting your backside on the line for anything, you're the business owner, you're the producer, you're you probably should be making more money than the workers. That's that's fine. That's not but when but when people can't afford the things in their life because the wages are not uh up to what the cost of living or what have you like it just comes down to basic like can we afford life you know um so i think as things get more expensive wages need to go up and we're at that place right now where wages need to go up in order to keep up with i mean toronto you know it's like oh, oh, freaking i mean it's super nightmare. expensive here in la super expensive like mm-hmm. You know, and it's one of those things is if you don't have, you know, we were very fortunate to be able to buy a home because of, uh, because of the show in the dark Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, but without that show, um, without having an obscene amount of money to put down for a down payment, um, we wouldn't even be able to afford a home like, and this is not like a luxury home like it's it's a home from 1950 it's a beautiful quirky little beautiful Mm -hmm. quirky little home but like being able to afford a home is it just like i feel like in a place to live it's just like a human it should be a human right and like absolutely um, absolutely yeah i'm sure the reason why people in the uk are striking is because they can't afford 
the the cost anything. of living has gone up. Milk has uh, honest, gone up. Honestly, honestly, anything or whatever uh, yeah. it is. So yeah, no, the 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 cost of living in the UK is 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 absolutely atrocious. Yeah, um, yeah. and uh, and there's you know there's there's a lot of politics that, that I won't go into, but it's it, right. it is it is com- completely nonsense. And I and I think I was was it yesterday, yesterday or the day before yesterday, I saw this story that um uh uh Shigeru Miyamoto. Mm-hmm. Uh, makes two million dollars a year, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> compare that to, compare that to like, uh, you know, your Bobby Kotick. Yeah, it's like the the CEO of Activision Blizzard. Yeah, he made like something like four hundred million dollars. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's so crazy, like. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's the wild. packages these CEOs get. I mean, I'm not listen. I'm not here to watch anybody's pockets. But you talking about two hundred million dollars, <laughs> and then talking about breaking the writers? Like, yeah, I know writer. Like people think, oh, like, and and that's the that's the other thing too. Is like people will look in and be like, well, you know, why should they make any more money? I do a job and I only get paid for. It's like they're creating the content. That allowed someone to make four hundred million, two hundred and fifty million. Like, th- should they not participate in those earnings? I, I think they should. If they're <laughs> they are the linchpin of of that business, writers are the linchpin of the business. So, without the writers, without the actors, you literally have reality television. And go for it. Like, and that's yeah. And that's why reality television has become so so prevalent. Yeah. In the past, in the past five years, it's just because they've been prepping for this, basically. Sure. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah. It's it's bonkers, and I'm and I'm very glad that you know, past couple of days as well, Sega in in uh, California, Sega is unionized. The workers have unionized. I think that's going to be. I think that's the. That's the one industry that doesn't have really any union representation is the video gaming industry, which is wild considering how huge it is in comparison to even even film. Yeah, video games are astronomically oh, larger, yeah. um, and for them to not have any uh, any unionization is wild. And I think I think it, it kind of um, until until that happens, you have to rely on. Uh, companies having good morals, which like we, you know, like your CD Projekt Reds, which like you know, yeah. the, there's 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 um, CD Projekt Red uh, is is known for not doing crunch, except when they had to do crunch for Cyberpunk, which is like okay, yeah. so you'll stick to your morals until it's not necessary to right. stick to your morals. Yeah, right. like right. you can't rely on companies to no, look after you can't. people. No, you can't. I mean, there was the there's a story of the producer being like, "Hey, well, can you can you um can we do these hours?" And the you know the production manager being like, "No, those hours are not humane." And he's like, "Well, can you do it unhumanely?" Like, <laughs> it's like it's oh, God. it's not it's it, it, you know it. It's product over people. It's profits over people. It, and and I think I mean you guys. I feel like you guys and in, in, I feel like in Canada and the UK, there's a lot of things that that are done right. Especially I'm thinking specifically medical. Um, mm, yes. Uh, you know, it just it. I think it's just about a care for the people. You know, you call it whatever you want. You can call it whatever you want, but mm. I think you just. I think government has to step in and say, put parameters in place. Otherwise, people would just make as much money as possible. And you, without a union, then you're just, you're fired. You're, you know, whoever is making the noise, you're fired. And, and I mean, you know, this, this stuff goes back for the longest time. It's Reagan's know? fault. It's Reagan and <laughs> Thatcher. That's it. It's Reagan and Thatcher and a lot of cocaine. That was the yeah. main problem yeah. Yeah. is how we got in this mess. We're still recovering from the cocaine hangover of Reagan's administration. Uh, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's, it, I was talking to a friend, um, for those in the UK that are listening, I was talking to a friend who lives in, in the States. Uh, who was considering moving to Canada? Mm-hmm. And I said, and they asked me how how you know Do how it. long. Well, <laughs> mate, he was like, you know, how long does it take you to see your your GP? 
I said, um, you know, the, the doctors are really, really struggling right now and no one's taking new patients. So I'd say like maybe a week and a week and a half, maybe two. He went, it's been four months since I've been able to get an appointment <laughs> with my doctor just to just to be, and like in the States, in the States. Yeah. Wow. In, in Ohio, in Ohio. Huh. I wonder he's, why. he's in small town, small town, Ohio. Like, okay, you know, okay. go, but, but, you know, if you're not in a major city, you are yeah, completely yeah. ruined. That's true. That's um, true. Cause I throw a pin and I can, you know, just go to a different doctor. So for sure. But you you're really, in, you're yeah. in LA, like yeah, it's yeah, 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 vastly yeah. different. Oh, totally. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, the, the healthcare thing is, is uh, looking in from the outside. It's bonkers. Mm -hmm. But then, oh, then coming 100%. to Canada, coming to Canada, and seeing there being only three phone companies and two supermarket companies is is also bonkers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, you guys have it in different. We, there's there's little things in different ways. I'm like, why is your cell phone bill that crazy? What do you mean yeah. you still have to worry about minutes? I'm like, what are you talking about? You're talking yeah. like you're in the '90s or something like. But yeah, yeah. that's how it is. That's how it that's is. That's how it is. It's yeah. wild. Well, I mean, that's just competition, right? You guys can't have any competition because of rogers etc so <laughs> yeah oh no it's so corrupt it's completely yeah. corrupt they 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 are they have their fingers in every pie as it were <laughs> would you ever would you ever consider moving moving the the whole operation to to canada maybe Hell vancouver yeah. or something Hell yeah we've already we've already we're we've already discussed that if if the right opportunity came along we would my daughter's canadian so yeah she was born there season 1 of the show so it just it's, I've never, actually, I've never been to Vancouver, but Toronto in particular just felt like, outside of winter, it felt like, <laughs> <laughs> outside of those, those months, it felt like home. It felt like home. <laughs> I can't do winter, yeah, man. I can't that's do the winter. Thing. <laughs> yeah, and you were here, correct me if I'm wrong, you were here every, no, you weren't here every winter. No, every so winter? the first two seasons, we had a glorious schedule. We got there in <laughs> August, right in time for Caravana. We were doing the thing, we were chilling, and then we'd leave like right before Christmas. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was It was like you get your, just a little touch of snow and then you'd be like, Bye. That was so nice. Oh, Toronto's yeah. amazing. God, Toronto's Spring. So lovely. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, <laughs> the first two seasons, that was pretty much our schedule. And then season three came and it was the pandemic. And that's, we were supposed to film it, start in June. So it would have been even a better schedule all of summer. But then, um, you know, pandemic came and pushed us back and pushed us back. And then those last two seasons, we started in October, just in time for like, you know, you had to be in your place October 15th. So miss all of fall because <laughs> because you had to be in lockdown for two weeks and then and then wake up into winter. And that was just a hard winter, all of winter, a touch of spring and then bye back home. So, yeah, no, uh, those last two seasons were not my favorite as far as like weather goes. But um, yeah, yeah, no, we we've thought we've talked about it. I, I mean, my wife is from Pittsburgh, so she feels mm. more like at home in an East Coast city. When we got back here to LA, we don't live in a walkable area by any means. And my daughter, literally, she was only three at that time, but she was just like, had full on breakdowns. of so she wanted to, I want to just walk to the park. I want to walk to yeah. school. She, the walkability, like, yeah. obviously you can find that anywhere. You can find that in LA, but it's not as prevalent as Toronto. Mm -hmm. or And it's more expensive, know, I East imagine, Coast to city. be in that walkable oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Santa Monica yeah. or wherever like you're talking about. I, I have a mate that was on the show called Defiance mm -hmm. that shot out here years and years ago, yeah. and uh, and I was and and Grant Bowler was was telling the story because it was their final season, and, and mm -hmm. he was telling the story that like there's a scene where they had to, they they, they were knocked unconscious mm -hmm. and they woke up out in the snow and they'd been abandoned out in the wilderness in the snow, mm. and uh, and he knew the scene was coming up. But they hadn't given him, you know, he wasn't supposed to be prepared for the cold weather. Yeah. So, so he was like, well, I know that it's snowing. So like in this scene before I get knocked out, could I just put some gloves on before they knock me out? <laughs> <laughs> and 
they wouldn't let him. Oh. So he, they knocked him out and he had to be face down in the actual snow in, in Bumblefuck Nowhere, Ontario. Oh, gosh. For like the entire day. I feel for him. I feel for him. <laughs> I think about I think about uh, Perry in in the dark mm. and mm. the season one having to swim in that cold lake. <laughs> I just had to like lie back and like just be in it, like because I her character was like feeling this emotional loss from the character from from losing her friend, and she's just like floating in this and that the I the lake was like ice cold, and I was just like, <laughs> what are we doing? But yeah, no, that's that's. That's that's it, man. Hey, that's listen, it. when you're number one on the call sheet, all right. <laughs> you gotta you got pain and suffering. Yeah, yeah pain and suffering. that's it. Sorry, yeah, Perry. No. I would be like, hey, can I get a hat for um this <laughs> this outdoor scene? And they were like, uh, yeah, like we just we just don't feel like um Darnell would wear you know like a hat. Like I feel like you know it's just <laughs> like okay, forget all the feel like I'm cold. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Darnell, Darnell is too hard. He's too, he's too tough to care about the cold. To wear a beanie. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't take things seriously when it comes to his own internal body temperature. Come on. Late, later seasons, they let me wear, wear some gloves and a beanie because well, I think got I wise. cried too much. Yeah. He got <laughs> wise by the later seasons. Later seasons, yeah. he realized, oh yeah, no, actually, you know, I yeah. need to start taking care of myself. I'm getting older. I need to. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a couple scenes where I'm wearing the hat, I'm wearing the beanie, I'm wearing the gloves, and I'm like, just the diction is just you know that cold dig where you're like, it's so cold that your diction isn't. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's that. He was cold. He was real cold. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can feel the tremor in the people's voices. They're like yeah. shivering away. Do you think does it get okay, so do you take that or the heat of a how like longest session? What's the longest session you've done in the booth? Oh, I, I've done like four during yeah four four six. Thing about the booth is it's great. Like I just open this door, and then you just like between whatever, just open oh, the door. Okay, all and right. You're good. So you can get airflow. Oh yeah, I and then, and I have a little airflow machine down here. So that, oh, but it's you quiet. got all the bells and whistles. Yeah, it's it's pretty quiet. Um, it doesn't bring in as much air as I'd love. Um, I was actually talking to somebody about having ac pumped into here but honestly it's not necessary i drop the temperature out there and then i just open the door and then literally it floods see, in like see he knows what he's doing this guy <laughs> he's got it all covered plus it doesn't matter what i look like so sweating in here yeah it's like, okay you know what i mean it's not all right mm, it's fine. okay that's it if you could do just voice acting from the booth in toronto would you do that as kind of like your main your main um avenue do you think sure. if that would be a fun fun old time or do you do you you know you still would would much rather be covered in balls with with uh with a thing strap you know a, a a prop from the saw universe strapped to your face so that jim cameron can get his shot <laughs> you know what i i i think uh you mean would i move to toronto and just do vo- vo yes no yes. no no because i nah. gotta be i gotta i mean first of all vo just as much as i love it it just I don't think I could afford a Toronto place. <laughs> I, I just, yeah. I gotta be honest. Uh, yeah. But, but even if I could, like, you could just do it anywhere. So, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I probably would move to somewhere that was sunny year round. I mean, like, I live somewhere that's sunny year round, but I probably would just move to somewhere by the beach. I, I would move there if there was some on camera thing that was pulling me there, and then just like keep doing and my sell. video throughout. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Vancouver has a beach, man. I'm just saying. That's true. That's true. Vancouver's That's it's true. it's like and it doesn't really snow except when it does, and they all freak out because it's two inches and they don't know what to do. <laughs> but isn't it super rainy? Like, mo- like. Oh, don't be that guy! Come I, on, come on! I mean, I get, oh, you've been in LA there's, too long. There's so you've much been in LA sun. Too it's just long. like, uh, you know, it, honestly, a weird dream of mine is just to be able to work down the street and then come home <laughs> like it just it just i know yeah, that's such a weird dream no yeah, i'm just no saying one has it is one. weird for this business it's strange oh, yeah, for this well, business like because yeah. most everything is in georgia or you know vancouver or toronto or somewhere else the work has gone from la but yeah like honestly that's my hope is my next job is just here but we'll yeah. see <laughs> you know did you wait is does does avatar shoot in in LA? I thought it was um, in... We did uh, both. We did both. Oh, it, so, so yeah, New Zealand the, as well? A lot of no. the, uh, a lot of the, uh, the, 
well, the stuff I was in shot in Manhattan yeah. Beach. Um, because oh, it's wow, in, really? in a soundstage. Yeah. So, huh. so yeah. So they did soundstage stuff for, uh, I want to say I started in 2017 and then I did mm. stuff in 2018. And then yeah. a- after, you know, in 2019, I think they went to, um, they went to New Zealand and then did their stuff over there and finished out out there. So, yeah. So you, d- you didn't do New Zealand? No. No. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd be interested to see what your take on New Zealand is because it's very, it's bizarrely English. Yeah. There's a lot of it's like it like if you know if you're British go look it up on like you know Google Earth or whatever but if you look at the streets and you're like oh it's like England but but actually not like England at all <laughs> but in this like bizarre way sure. where it's and and there's lots of beaches because it's you know tiny island yeah um yeah, so yeah. I I wonder but again rain maybe, so I don't maybe, know whether it maybe would be Avatar your... three we'll see we'll yeah see. We'll do you, see. would you like to go down to to New Zealand yeah I mean. <laughs> it's a trip. Like it's, yeah, it's a trip. It's a pretty yeah. long trek. I mean, as long as I can hang for like a long enough time to make it worth it, then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. wouldn't go for a week. No, 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 no. no. But yeah. then, like, if they're doing it in Manhattan Beach, then like they probably wouldn't need to. They can just do it yeah. on the soundstage and stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that they'd set one up in LA now. But then I guess that's kind of the nature of the business now. That's everything's everything. Yeah, at their studios, the they have. Um, I mean. Mm-hmm. Light, light storm is right there, so they just mm-hmm. they just did it. Yeah. I, and I I need to ask because I I messaged you this mm-hmm. and you didn't respond because I think you were getting like so many people messaging you about what? how cool it is. But I asked when you because you it was it was in response to a video you were talking about how you you know were doing all of this mocap and stuff. And I need to know: Do they make you T pose at the end of of What's a take? T posing. Like- so like there's there's a very famous clip of um uh from when they were filming the 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 mocap for the last of us video game yeah sure troy baker is like having this really emotional scene about his daughter dying yeah and then they say cut and they all and he's like ah and then they cut and they all have to just stand and t-pose at the end <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they don't do that. No, no that's so. Sh- that's such no. a shame. That is such a wasted <laughs> opportunity for comedy. Like, <laughs> for God's sake, that would be like, really. That would be really tough, though. I am sure I would forget that. Um, no, yeah, no. We, you know what? They do have you do a ton of poses. I can't even remember the range of motion. They call it like range of motion, whatever. So, like, so that. Yeah. So you're doing all that stuff, you mm-hmm. know, reaching down, whatever, T pose, all that stuff, uh, before you get to set. And um oh, to wow. make sure that to make sure that the can you know, everything that the computer's picking you up in the right oh, way. Oh, so they get so that it's more just for testing the tracking yeah. than anything else. Oh, yeah. yeah. So wow. we we did go through that, but but not after not once you're on set, you're on set. It's just like all right. It's it's, it's, it's a lot more enjoyable to just play around yeah. and whatever. Yeah. I think Jim's. I think Jim Cameron's <laughs> missing a trick just for his own uh, movies. It's just, <laughs> just like have everybody set like, up like that. <laughs> yeah, at Christmas he's just like, oh, I, I just want to see Keston T pose again. And he just pushes his button, <laughs> and his ninety million dollar screen comes down, and it's just you T posing at the end of a scene. That's what oh, I do. Comedy. Comedy. Yeah, that's that's why I do it. I'd hire everyone just to get people to tee pose. <laughs> like, uh, we don't have to do that anymore, Miles. Uh, it's fine. It's <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> Whose movie is this? It's mine. <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> uh, do you have time for a, an advice question? Can sure, I keep you for sure, a little sure. bit? Sure, Yeah, man. Wonderful. Yeah. A question here from Robbie. Okay. Next year, I'm heading for my GCSEs. GCSE is kind of like uh, uh, end of high school. No, not end of high school. So 15, 16, whatever that is. I don't know what okay. that would be in high school, but the, the exams that we have at 15, 16. Okay. Quite daunting. One subject I'm very paranoid about is music. Composition okay. part of it I find impossible, extremely difficult. It's not as easy to say work hard and revise as it's something you either know or you don't. And I feel like I don't particularly have great teachers. Hmm. Uh, any advice on how to get through this? Hmm. Did you have anything like this back in... Okay, this is now just people making fun of my, of the fact that I look like a child, but I'm older. Did you have anything <laughs> experiencing this back in the 1940s sitting your exams? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks very like... much. First of all, how dare you, Robbie? Secondly... <laughs> 
yeah, that's. I, I think obviously we can't help you with the at first. At first of all, I have to preface this: this is just our take. This is just yeah. our take. Yeah, and yeah. We are yeah, not yeah, licensed yeah. people to give advice, but you asked for yeah. advice, so we're giving it. Um, and we also can't give you music advice. But I think I I picked this question because I think it kind of ties into just talent. Mm. knowing when you have talent or when you don't and if you are still committed to something even though it might not be something that you're naturally talented at sure and sure. how you and how you <clears throat> grapple with that have you right. ever had anything like that happen apart uh. from no because you're talented in every way <laughs> no i mean <laughs> look 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 i i think i'm thinking back to just uh, i did like um a semester in in, in germany and um in in college and it was it was there wasn't a test or anything like that but as far as music goes like it was it was music theater bavaria was the the name of the the, the program that i did bavaria and, wow yeah i know and and so we like i'm just i'm not a musical theater major and so the timing of this song this duet from uh, mm. into the woods we did agony and it just wasn't on and I do, I do think like at a point, everyone, especially the, all the teachers sort of gave up on us as far as like, mm. well, either it's better by tomorrow or you're not going on for the big production or whatever it is. And so like the, you could see that the, the professors from Miami had sort of given up on us. They were like, yeah. these guys are actors. They're not music theater people. And Literally, me and my roommate, we just we went back to the hotel and we just we just worked that shit. We just worked yeah, it. We yeah. worked it. We worked the timing. We said, okay, well, what are the notes we've been given and how can we work on this? We set up the metronome and we worked on it. And the next day we showed up to do it again. And they were like literally amazed. Like, how did you guys make this 180 turn, like this complete turn? uh from from not from being you won't go on stage to now we have to have you on stage because like the timing was there but also the acting was there yeah and i mean we just we worked on it and then i'm not saying that like it's not about hard work it's about smart work so mm. what are you what portions are you missing and who else other than your teachers could you go to to help you kind of learn that and so yeah, we went yeah. to some of the people who were in the program who had had great timing who had you know who could help us and they explained it to us in a way that made sense sometimes it's not just that you don't have talent sometimes your directors uh or in this case your the the people who Teachers. are running your program yeah they are i don't i don't know about you but a lot of a lot of my teachers did not do this professionally they did it professionally for a while and then they became teachers. Became teachers, yeah. So a lot of times you got to go to the people who are actually doing it and they'll be like, oh, oh, here's how you, you know. Um, so get outside help. Get outside help and see if you can, yeah. I think that's what, especially in creative, I think that's what I'm learning more and more is that, that you're not going to get anywhere on your own. It's collaborative. Art in general is collaborative. Even, even you know. Hans Zimmer still has a bunch of people that he gets to do a lot of the work. Like you, 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 you can't be a monolith when it comes to being creative. And the the sooner you're uh, able to, I mean, you seem Robbie to be able to understand um, your limitations already. You might be being a bit too harsh on yourself. You don't, you know, you never know. Maybe the teacher has just not given you the kind of positive reinforcement that you need to feel like you do have talent. Sure, sure. Um, but you know. Like Kestner said, talk to talk to the people that are outside or the other people in the class. And maybe there's someone that just allows you to see things in a, a new light or, yeah. it, you know, they interpreted the, the way that your teacher talked about it, right. a particular way that worked for them. Mm -hmm. And then their interpretation is then what helps you, you know, um, and that's kind of because you're not going to get anywhere. Just kind of like it's not something, especially art is not something you can just hit your head against a wall and then it'll work. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you don't feel like you're, you know, you're talented and uh, you, you have natural talent for it. You, you yeah. have to find the ways that work for you to be able to understand it and to, to 
uh, have that kind of eureka moment and and they'll, they'll i feel like there'll be one moment and it'll just it'll just click it'll click in it, it'll click yeah. in or it won't and, mm. and you know um i think there are people who you know in, in speaking about music there are people who have perfect pitch and they can just they they were born with that that's a gift right it doesn't mean the people who don't have perfect pitch and have to work their ass off to get there are less talented it just means that maybe they just have to I mean, yeah. I know you said, Robbie, like you don't want to hear work a little bit harder, but it is. You may have to do more work to get to the place that you're that you're the people in your class already are. But that's OK. And if you're not willing to do that work or you don't aren't like reach out, like we talked about reaching out to different people. If you're not willing to do that, then maybe that maybe that thing isn't necessarily for you. But maybe you can just get to a place of passing and 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 move on to the thing that you does excite you in a way that where the work doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how hard you have to work. You're just going to do it because it's what you need and yeah. what you believe in doing. And that and that work will inform your art as well. Mm. Yeah. You know, the 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 things that you learn that are unique to you and the way that you experience the things that you learn are going to be unique to you and will inform the kind of things that you end up going towards in, in your work. Um, you know, as well as, you know, your own personal experience, et cetera, et cetera, is going to, it's all going to inform things. So struggle is, is struggle is as good an influence in, on your art as anything else. And, and if it's something that you really, if it, if music is something that you live for, then don't, don't see struggle as, as a sign to give up, just see it as, as more flavor more flavor f for what you're writing. Go you through know? it to get to it. That's what I say. You have go to. through it to get to it. There yeah. you go. That's a tattoo yeah. for someone's forearm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> love that. Yeah, there you I go, live Robbie. my life in, 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 in tattoos or uh, bumper stickers type quotes. <laughs> 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 just, just put it on the back of a bumper sticker, and I'm good. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, so what do you got going on, Keston? What, what what can people what can people look forward to? Plug. Pl this is the plug moment. Oh, There's no man. jingle, you know, um, <laughs> that you can talk of, about that you can talk thing, about. Obviously, that's the thing is like, I can't, there's nothing that I'm working on that I can talk about because none of it has, none of it's like necessarily like, I just finished, um, uh, uh I just finished, uh, doing ADR for, um, gosh, I can't even remember it right now. Um, <laughs> so bad he's a professional uh, guys yeah 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 no <laughs> just forgets I... <laughs> about the work as soon as he's done he's like i've got the paycheck what is it i don't even remember essentially all the things that i'm working on now and voiceover is super way more hush hush than mm. you know like if you do something on television you could talk about it all day oh i just filmed with so and so and post a picture but like animation is very much like yeah. Keep it shut until nah. they announce it. So the, the game I'm on, I still don't even know what it's called. They won't tell yeah. me. <laughs> exactly. I don't even know what platform it's coming out. Oh, and then and then if you're a gamer, go go listen for go listen for for Keston on uh, Diablo. Yeah, we didn't even we didn't even touch on Diablo. Oh man, there's there's the gaming. The gaming is just it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. There's a lot of games that I've done. And, Go on IMDb and check it out. Yeah, just go, watch, go on his IMDb and watch everything yeah, he's just, on. Just, and, just, just check it out. I don't know. Yeah. And what are you What are you on the socials? Uh, at Keston John. K-E-S-T-O-N-J-O-H-N. Yep. See, he's Super a professional. Easy. No, he's got his, no, his, no his, underscores or anything like that. Just, all right. Okay. Just because I'm <laughs> underscore. Sorry. You probably had to. I mean. It, I did, it, yeah. It the other Miles, yeah. The other Miles Dobson is like a a, 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 a model in the uk ah. he beat me to it he beat me to it by that much <laughs> you try and fight him for it <laughs> i would lose he's ripped <laughs> I'm, I'm not that guy uh, i had another at keston john but i he he's like much older he's like he was in his 80s so i don't think he was on social but oh nice he, he nice, was he yeah. was a john keston so my name always uh, comes up yeah he's a he's like a runner from the uk but Oh, fair I got enough. all of the people were being like, "Did you just die?" And I was like, "No, that was." That was <laughs> <laughs> Love that! Well, congratulations not on not dying. Good yeah. job. Yeah, we're all proud of you. <laughs> all right, thank you, Keston. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And we will. We'll see you next week. Thanks bye -bye. for having me. <laughs>